See, I was... Uh, I don't know, this is... Uh, this has become like a standard chant all over the world, increasingly... increasingly polarized world, increasingly polarized world. Well, I would say the world is far more democratic than ever before in the history of humanity. In the past, if you look back and see, <laughs> anybody who was not your clan or your race or your religion, people were just killing them without a question. At least now they're asking some questions and then they attempt things <laughs> So, talking about the U.S. election as the most polarized, I was with one of those social media stars and they asked a similar question, never before America has been polarized like this. I said, well, you had a civil war, didn't you? Oh yeah, that we had, but this is more than that. This is not more than that, this is a democratic process. When an election comes, people will talk vehemently about their choices. It's perfectly fine. Democracy allows fiery speeches. As long as you don't talk about killing them, beheading them, murdering them, this kind of rubbish. Except for that, I can vehemently disagree with you. What is the problem? It's perfectly fine. That is what democracy is about. Because if you are not standing up for what you think is right, it may be wrong. You may be wrong, but you right now think it is right, so you're standing up fiercely for it. It is very needed for a democratic process, otherwise there is no democratic process. But your fierceness should not become violent. You fiercely depend your... Uh, defend your view of how things should happen, all right? But this doesn't give you any right for violence because the fundamental of democracy is this, that change of power can happen without bloodletting on the streets. When I say this, I'm saying this because never before in the history of humanity, change of power happened without a few heads rolling. Always, always and always it happened this way. It is only in the last fifty to hundred years since the democratic process got established that you can change leadership without killing anybody, which is a significant development in human civilizations, all right? So, in America, there are only two main parties. Literally, it's a two-party democracy. So, naturally, nearly fifty percent will be this way, fifty-one percent will be that way. That is the only way to win the election. Now you see this and say, it is polarized. No, that's how it should be. If one party becomes ninety-five percent, another becomes five percent, then what is the point? There's no democracy there, all right? So it is good that the country is divided at the time of election into two halves. It's a good thing. But post-election, that divide should not continue because even if somebody that I do not like gets elected, once they're elected, we respect the institution for what it is. Whether it's a prime ministership or presidency or whatever the institution is, because democracy is a rule of institutions, not of people. Oh, I don't like this guy. Doesn't matter, you don't have to marry that guy, all right? You don't have to live, live with him. The question is only, will this person be able to do justice for our country, whatever country we belong to, all right? For this nation, will this person be able to handle our nation well? Before election, we debate. Once people have voiced their choice, you bow down to that, I may not agree, but still you bow down to that because that is when democracy is effective. It's just like playing a game, I'm saying. You play a game, you want to win fiercely. If you don't want to win, how to play with you, huh? Hello? If I come and play a game with you and you don't want to win, can I play with you? No, you want to win, then only we can play with you. But suppose you lose, you're all right then we can play with you. I don't want to win, we can't play with you. I cannot lose, we can't play with you. Yes, I want to win, but if I lose, it's all right with me. This is democratic process. So, there is no polarization. Yes, today you see, you hear more noise because never before, ordinary citizens were empowered to speak 
Only media said what it said, they printed everything. Now everybody is able to publish whatever they want, all kinds of people. Some people who have an understanding of things, some people who have no understanding of anything, half-wits, half-brains, every kind of people have an expression on the social media. But they may be half-brained, but they have a full oat, so it matters what they say, I'm saying. They may be uneducated, they may not be in a business school, they may be doing nothing worthwhile, they may be drug addicts, they may be useless people, but they have the same oath that you have. So their opinion also matters. This is democracy. You may not like it, but this is democratic process. So the most important thing for a democratic process to be a productive process is, we must educate the entire population in a more comprehensive way, not just in terms of degrees, but in term… in a more comprehensive way, understanding the full breadth and depth of what this nation needs, what the people need. If everybody have some sense of this, then the voting will happen in a more educated and informed way, which is what needs to happen. That is not one day's job. A generation has to work for it, then only it'll be a successful process.